There was a gubernatorial pep talk for Hawaii Island Corrections recruits on Friday. You get the right training, you do the right thing, you're going to be supported. Nobody's going to run away. Governor Neil Abercrombie was joined by State Department of Public Safety Director Ted Sakai in Hilo to meet and address a basic corrections training recruit class. These recruits will replace adult corrections officers currently at the Hawaii Community Correctional Center who will transfer to the Kolani Correctional Facility when it reopens on July 1st. We spoke to the governor outside the meeting room of the old state courthouse afterwards. What we're here today about is to see to it Kolani uh, not only reopens but uh, that these young men and women uh, who are thinking of having a career in corrections understand that they're going to be part of an initiative towards a complete revamping and reorientation of, of the corrections program in, in Hawaii, throughout Hawaii. And the Big Island is a, is, is a kickoff to that. W within whatever the return policies are uh, for, uh, uh, for corrections uh, officers and, uh, and Department of Public Safety officials, uh, uh, with regard to the uh, uh, fallout from the closing of the prison, we're going to take that into account. Everybody who had return rights, for example, is, is, is going to be given that opportunity, and we take it from there. Closing of Kalani caused the whole disruption in our corrections system that otherwise might, might not have occurred. So opening Kalani is a visible step not just to the people of the Big Island, but to the state, that we're reversing that. The governor was critical of the closure of the Kolani Correctional Facility, which came suddenly in 2009 under the administration of then-Governor Linda Lingle. Abercrombie began work to reinstate the facility after he was elected into office in 2010. He said everything is on track. July. July 1st? Um, about July. July 1st, I think. Yeah. Cut me a little slack. July. No, early July. Early July. Early July. The new warden of Kulani, Ruth Collier Forbes, was introduced to the room. Our chief of security, Captain Calvin Mock. Hello. And we have our business services supervisor, Ms. Nyla Silva. And the other staff is coming on board in April. The governor also spoke about the Youth Challenge Academy, which currently occupies the Kulani facility. The program for at-risk youth moved in after the Department of Public Safety moved out. Part of that, you know, is uh, interestingly enough, part of the reason it has taken us as long as it has uh, since I came into office to get Kulani open is that we are making uh, 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 possible the, uh, the uh, um, uh, switch of the Youth Challenge program. Uh, that went up at Kulani uh, into facilities and circumstances we think is more in line with the program. I think I can speak a little bit authoritatively to that because the Youth Challenge Program came into existence and was supported as a result of the work we did in the Armed Services Committee in the Congress of the United States when I was a part of it. I've been a big champion of the Youth Challenge Program. It works with the National Guard uh, throughout the, uh, the country and various states. The Youth Challenge Program uh, offers opportunities to young people, both uh, young men and young women who might otherwise uh, find themselves in situations where they might end up in the correctional system, give them a chance to straighten themselves out. The governor also had some thoughts on future corrections facilities, both existing and planned. This Hilo jail has to be completely uh, redone, replaced, uh, maybe just a new location, I, mean, I don't know, we'll, we'll see about that. But that, and we do not have, as you know, the west side of the island is growing in numbers and density and all kinds of, of ways economically. And so, uh, and there's a new judiciary complex over there. Uh, my, my plan uh, uh, includes uh, building uh, jail facilities, uh, uh, correctional facilities on the Kona side uh, and uh, eliminating the necessity of going back and forth uh, with prisoners and so on, it's just the practical side of things, it's like that. Plus that means there's going to be more activity in terms of professional openings and, uh, you know, on the practical side of, of, of what's in front of you as, as an ACO, as a correctional officer, there's going to be opportunities for advancement, there's going to be opportunities for, for new uh, and uh, as yet uh, non-existent uh, uh, positions and uh, responsibilities. Uh, all that's part of an integrated plan to Hawaii Tribune Herald reporter John Burnett had a few questions about that Kona facility. Now, are these are, are these plans on paper at this point, or are these talking points at this point? They're not talking points. They're they're ready, almost ready for uh, prime time exposure. Any cost uh, cost analysis done at this point? Or? Oh yes. The question that has to be answered right now is what's the cost of uh, 
of sending people out of the state, uh, not just in dollars and cents terms, but in, in lost opportunities for uh, dealing with our own difficulties, our own way inside our own ahana, inside this state. Will we ever be able to bring everybody back? I mean, yes. you mentioned the overcrowding. Yes. It is part of the overall plan. The overall plan. As, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm moving towards making an investment. You know what you've got now? Just the cost in lives, not just the cost in lost opportunity, but making an investment uh, and seeing to it that uh, we come to grips with our own problems inside Hawaii and inside our own family. Governor Abercrombie also had a lot to say about an agricultural project at Kulani, which he says was just awarded a big grant. He detailed what the project will entail for the recruits. So the Inmate to Farmer program. Now some of you may be familiar with the Best to Farmer uh, program that we've initiated up here. Some of the veterans that are now trying to, not trying, but succeeding in, in uh, growing food uh, and selling, marketing, uh, uh, not just doing the growing, but doing the marketing and, and succeeding. Uh, in, in it. Um, uh, there will be two sites, one 500 acres, one co-located with the facility of 200 acres. We're going to have a renewable energy system to create low-cost energy and fertilizer from agricultural and green waste because we want to be self-sufficient in the egg. When I'm talking about egg, I'm also talking, I'm, I'm hoping about cattle and, and the, the, whole, the whole spectrum. Post-harvest facility uh, using low-cost energy to support processing. I want to do processing. Well, I'd like to see a business be started uh, here as well. Uh, industrial certified kitchen will go with it. Um, uh, agricultural training park uh, will we'll have 5,000 square feet farm lots, greenhouses, central building uh, for equipment for education office space. The goal is to create self-sufficient <coughs> agricultural training program uh, to create low-cost fresh foods for the facility, improve diet, wellness, nutrition for everybody, including us. Right? Uh, we want to lower. Uh, we think it's going to help lower the recidivism rate. We're going to be not only training people, but giving people a sense uh, that uh, uh, that they are not just in a hopeless situation, marking time. If everything works, uh, uh, hopefully the way it should, um, we may be even doing processing. So, but we're we're going to start. Uh, uh, small and uh, see what we can do in terms of the internal um, uh, requirements uh, for food and nutrition uh, at Kulani and uh, take it from there. The program will advance as, as fast as it, both technologically and professionally we're able to take it. And uh, in terms of the state, we intend to integrate everything including the natural area reserve uh, programs, uh, the rain follows the forest programs, uh, uh, everything's going to be integrated.